One thing we haven't done in a while is sat down and done a good old Game Boy mod. So today, we're going to be building the Gintendo Bame Noi. So the Gintendo Bame Noi, all this is is just a shell and this will actually be available to buy on retro modding. Uh, this video is not sponsored, but I will get a little bit of commission each time someone buys one. So it's literally just the Nintendo Game Boy logo that has been um, moved about and uh, made incredibly annoying because Gintendo Bame Noi makes no sense at all. Not even one of those is a word. So I love it. I think it's absolutely fantastic. Massive thank you to Gary at Retro Modding specifically for doing this, but um, I thought this would be a great idea to take a look at the brand new IPS uh, screen. This is the V3 edition. So there's a few changes. There's a couple of things that we're going to be using uh, that are sort of new. Um, so one of them is a 3D printed bracket, which is taped very well onto the packaging. Um, so this 3D printed bracket supposedly is going to help us with this entire process. If you remember correctly, when I did the first Ultimate Game Boy build, uh, the IPS screen that was used, you had to reverse some of the traces because one of the um, the grayscale gradients had reversed. So that was annoying. That meant that you have to, you had to be quite specialist to actually install that. Uh, the other thing as well is that the pre-built kit. Uh, from retro modding was misaligned and that was not down to retro modding what that was down to was the misalignment of uh, these little groove sort of cut out through holes here uh, which lines up with the back of the IPS screen and you're meant to just stick it in there and the whole thing will be centered but that didn't actually happen so this is a new revision I'm very excited to see how well it performs um, all of the prices and everything will be in the description yeah without any further ado Let's get into it. So for this, we're obviously gonna need a Game Boy. This one is working absolutely fine. It's got one vertical line, but I will literally fix this screen and reuse it uh, in a future project. It's very important that, yeah, I think realistically, if you if you do this mod, try and find a Game Boy that has a broken, you know, smashed LCD screen or has leaked pixels or some uh, horizontal lines. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this Game Boy apart and uh, we shall install the new IPS V3 screen. So once you've undone the six triangle screws on the back, I'm sure you know by now, you just slide the top shell out. We're not actually gonna need to use any of this stuff because I've got new membranes and new buttons to put in, but obviously if you're doing this yourself, you will need to take this apart a bit further, but the rest of this will still apply. So let's, oh, there goes all the screws. Let's now take apart the back of the DMG and we'll give this whole motherboard a clean up. Obviously, uh, it's a little bit old, so we'll need to put some IPA in the, uh, the areas that have worn down or built up crud and get it working nice and good. So there we go, there's my DMG motherboard. And although this uh, shell was horribly yellow and dirty, the Game Boy inside is actually really good. And the button contact, the, sorry, the battery contacts here are nice and minty. Although retro modding do sell an entire replacement set of um, battery contacts, if that is something that you need. What we're gonna do now is pull out the Bame Noise shell and uh, cut up the front of the shell slightly. We do need to make a little bit of room for the new IPS screen. So to begin this install, we're gonna to need to cut up this shell a little bit. For this, grab some flush cutters and remove these two screw posts at the top here because the IPS screens that are used in these mods are quite long. So if you've ever done a Game Boy Color one, uh, you'll know that the screen's actually gonna come down a little bit further and go up a little bit further. So make sure that's nice and flush and then you can take a craft knife afterwards and just flatten it down even more. So what we shall do now is grab the new IPS screen. So here it is inside of this anti-static bag. So there's the actual IPS panel itself. Very similar to all of the other ones that we've seen before. Um, obviously far longer than it needs to be, but this is just the cheapest way they're gonna do it. This ribbon cable here is gonna go into the back of the front PCB and then into the DMG's power board below. And then this is the actual, I think this is the driver board for the LCD itself. So that's gonna plug into the back of this. That's gonna go into here. It's all very self-explanatory. So let us take all of these new parts and see quite how easily it fits together with this 3D printed bracket. So presumably, we put this in here. 
I haven't actually followed any tutorial or read this up. I'm just gonna guess it. <laughs> Great idea. So that's clearly gonna go into there. You've got this little cut out here for where that ribbon cable is gonna fold down. But I'm fairly certain, oh, that's actually kind of clicked into place. That's very nice. Yeah, it has. It's got a little lip on the front of that 3D print piece. That's very good. So this, I think, is probably gonna slide into there. Let's take the IPS screen and shove that in there. That sort of clips in and holds everything into place. Look at that, that is a lovely little module. And then we're gonna fold this ribbon cable over into this little brick connector. Let's uh, make sure that's going in properly. There we go, nice little click into place. And then, presumably, we set this whole piece down. We need to trim this little piece here. Let's go ahead and do that. Again, I'm not following any instruction, I'm just learning on the job. Oh yeah, look at that. That's gone right in. Absolutely beautiful, look at that. And presumably, that's gonna be perfectly centered. So that is a lovely little thing. Really good job on the uh, printing of that. Okay, so after that, we are gonna fold this over, no, like that, and then into, So before we attach the screen into this little thing, what we need to do is set the buttons down. So I thought what would be really annoying uh, for the Nintendo Bamenoi was if we were to swap it round so that the D-pad was the burgundy sort of maroony, I don't know how what even color that is, um, and then the action buttons were black as opposed to the original, whoops, uh, where the D-pad is black and these buttons are the red sort of color. So let's do that and see what it looks like. I'm sure it's gonna be fine. Um, I just think it's kind of funny and annoying. One thing I'm noticing is that this doesn't come with a speaker. So you are actually gonna need to desolder your old speaker or buy a new one and solder it in, which is gonna put quite a lot of people off because I know people don't want to solder. Plus, if you don't have the stuff, it's just gonna increase the price quite a lot. So uh, yeah, that is one thing definitely to take note of. We're gonna do that now. So desoldering the speaker is very simple. I'm gonna be using my TS-80 to do this, which is the uh, the brother to my ES-120. <laughs> God, all these crazy names. Uh, it's literally just these two pads right here. And if you're looking to do this mod and uh, you're put off by desoldering uh, two wires, you need to give it a go because you're never gonna learn if you don't do it and it's a very simple thing to do. So uh, once you've done that, um, let's give this speaker a little clean. In fact, no, let's put it in here first and then we can turn the scary soldering iron off. So it's very simple. We're just gonna take these two wires and thread them through these two holes. And then add some solder to the pad. Very easy. Right, now let's give the speaker a clean because obviously the speaker needs holes in the shell for the sound to travel out, but then leaving a hole in a shell is gonna inevitably get dust and dirt and stuff inside. So let's give this a little wipe. So now we're gonna take the front shell, we're gonna plug this ribbon cable in, which I believe is blue side up. Make sure that's in all the way down and then close the little black latch over. And then we've got this little rubber thing, which is, and then we just need to put the shell in and make sure that everything closes down properly. And that's it. It's as easy as that. No way. Right, let's put all these screws in and then we can test to make sure that this is all working properly. So we're gonna take this short little ribbon cable and just whack it in there. And then this side goes pins up into the front piece. That is not easy. That is a nasty, uh, a nasty job that. Okay, everything is in, so let's go ahead and see if it turns on. Hey, look at that, and that is perfectly aligned. Speaker works perfectly, perfectly aligned screen. All of this is working, lovely. Oh yes, look at this. So a couple of things I need to do before we put it back together. I'm gonna to take this apart and peel off the protective film from the screen. I'm gonna swap over the uh, metal cartridge shield in the back here into our new shell and then move the battery contacts over as well and then I'll just reassemble it.
And just like that, the Gintendo Bame Noi was born. I really like how the uh, maroon button is now the D-pad and then these are black because it really, from a distance, doesn't look too dissimilar. It just looks like a standard Game Boy. But then you look up close and you're like, hang on, why are these black? What is this? What is a Gintendo Bame? It's really not that funny. <laughs> Let's be honest, it really isn't that funny. However, it is different, and that is what we want on this channel, something original. So, uh, yeah, one of the things I installed, there's two things I did that you saw in that little montage, but wasn't really spoken about, which is definitely worth speaking about. The first one, on the side here, where the old contrast wheel was, which is now going to be your brightness wheel, as well as the button, which you press in to circle, uh, circulate, circuit one of those words, through the different sort of colours and colour palettes and all the rest of it um, on your screen. So uh, you're going to need to shave off that piece of plastic, as you saw. And then the other thing I did as well, which is really optional, is I fitted a like a... a a light leak <laughs> um, sort of bezel piece around the inside, 3D printed, um, available on Retro Modding. So I'll leave everything about Retro Modding, as I said about the prices, the links in the description below. Uh, their shells are exceptionally high quality. This feels amazing. I'm a massive, massive fan of Retro Modding, and I've never received a penny from them in payment. I just like what they do, and they've put in a lot of work for me, so thank you to them. Um, so yeah, one thing left to do, let's play a little bit of Tetris. Uh, yeah, you can go through the different colours there, there's your original black and white, you've got a sort of a pink and yellow colour palette, and then a sort of a lilac-y one. Um, green, red, yellow, purple, and then back to where you were before. And honestly, the results really are phenomenal, that you can see for yourselves, they are exceptional, the quality is gorgeous. So yeah, very, very cool little mod. Our speaker works great. Very simple to do. All we had to do was one small bit of soldering, which was just those two speaker wires. Uh, really not that difficult, you know. I would I would strongly advise, if you've never done any soldering before, give it a try with this mod, because chances are you're going to get it absolutely perfect first time round. So, yeah, I really hope you've enjoyed this little video. I just felt like I hadn't done a mod on the channel in a while, and, uh, you know, this, this sort of funny shell gave me a... Perfect excuse to crack out the soldering iron and the screwdriver and uh, give it a go. So hopefully you've enjoyed. Um, I certainly have. The results on this are beautiful. The only thing I can say is because obviously these um, screens require that whole new front board, it does sort of take away the originality feeling of a Game Boy and you, you really do feel like you're playing on more of a modern thing but that's not necessarily a problem. You know, there's nothing stopping you from having a perfect example Hey, there's nothing stopping you from having a perfect example of a Game Boy which is unmodded and then a modded one that you actually play on to be a little bit more practical. But I really hope you've all enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like. I'd really appreciate it. And I'll catch you all in the next one. Goodbye.